You guys know how I feel, how I felt for a long time that Rutgers belonged in the Big Ten, and it's it's weekends like this that uh, that made me want to be in this league. So we're we're excited about the opportunity. We're going to go out there and see how we stack up. I don't know how much you enjoy like a good story, but two years ago, Rutgers. Week four, lost to Michigan. Next day, they fired their head coach. Um, it's been a long two uh, two years, but now you're 3-0, national TV. When people ask you how Rutgers was able to kind of get it turned around, what were some of the key things that, in your mind that Rutgers was able to get this to the point where you're relevant again in a lot of people's eyes? Well, let's make it clear. We're, we haven't turned anything around, right? We've had a, a good start to, to our non-conference schedule. But, you know, this is what I keep talking about is Rutgers in the Big Ten. And now we start playing our Big Ten schedule. And that's that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So we, we, have, to, we have to go and show that we belong. And we haven't done that yet. And we won a couple games. But as I've t- said to you before, I don't feel like 2020 was real. I think you didn't really get a, a real picture of every team. I thought you had a distorted – picture and I'm not taking anything away from what the players or staff did here but this is real and we're going out to play against a really really good football team uh, that has got it going I mean you can just everything I've looked at the film I've looked at the media that I've listened to there's a good uh, there's a good vibe out there right now they're playing really good football they're playing winning football they're holding on to the ball playing good defense they're running the ball right when you do that you have a chance to win every week. So uh, we have our our work cut out for us for sure, but I'm anxious to see how we stack up, and I know our players are. That's what it's about. It's fun. Let's go play. Greg, when you look at uh, Michigan's running backs on film, I mean, what stands out about them, especially a guy like uh, Blake Corum? Yeah, they're really good running backs, and it's not just Blake. It's all of them. They have a really good running back room. You can see it. And I think the guy who coaches him, Coach Hart, I've, I've followed him. I've tracked him from when he was a player. I remember when we were all at this, um, I don't know what it was, Ray was being honored down in Orlando. And I remember he was there as a player. So I've tracked his career and at different times thought about reaching out to see if we could bring him here. I, I think he's an excellent coach that uh, that room is doing a great job. You know, certainly talented players, but I think it's more than that. A chance to look at the film. How, what did you take away from the offensive line? You know, all those mix and matching. I guess, do you do it position by position, or do you maybe look, oh, this left side looked the best of that group and, and go side by side like that? Predominantly, it's an individual's performance because you, it's hard to start saying, well, these two work better together, or these two work better together um, because there is a lot of mixing. It might come up in a conversation down the road, but the primary uh, evaluation is individual performance. How did this player do? And I think that we got more out of our line by doing it the way we did it this week. Now, did that have something to do with the competition level? It might have. Not, you know, I thought Syracuse had a very good front. Um, but we're going to continue to do different rotations on the offensive line, as I told you Saturday, until we really feel, if we ever feel, that these five guys belong every play. And if we get to that, great. And if we don't, um, or if it's better the way we're doing it, playing seven or eight guys, that's okay, too. Greg, uh, Aaron Krushank, co- uh, co-special teams player of the week of the Big Ten. Just talk about his evolution, adding punt return to the repertoire as well. Yeah, I was very excited, you know, coming into the year. I thought Aaron could – be an explosive threat and um, he has started off the season being just that again now we go to Big Ten play so everything goes up to here right it's harder to do that what he does in the Big Ten so let's see but uh, and it's he is a great returner like the return Saturday he got some good supporting cast blocks but there was a couple points on that touchdown run where he just went right went left and then went really fast and there was people there he just ran away from so uh, he's individually very talented, and I think the unit, it's both the KOR and the punt return are doing a good job as well. Greg, the uh, lack of turnovers. I asked Noah about it after the game. He cited a 
you know, a stat, I think you probably, uh, like the 71% national study, you know, over, you know, I Googled it, couldn't find it. Um, what is that? What, what is he talking about that? Where 71% where, where of the teams that don't turn, turn the ball over, that they're going to win the game. Can you just talk a little bit about that uh, stat in particular? Well, sure. There's the stat of if you don't turn it over, and then the even more strong stat is when you win the net turnover margin. And plus two is the magic number. If you're plus two, you're going to win, and I don't know the exact percentage, but it's way up here, right? So, you know, Saturday we didn't turn it over. We didn't take it away either, which was disappointing to me. Um, and I think very disappointing to our defense. First two games we took the ball away. And I don't buy into that, well, it's kind of a streaky thing. That's a bunch of baloney. You do your job, you do it right, and you get takeaways. Right. I mean, Delaware was not a superior ball security team, and we didn't take advantage of it. So that's on us. We, we let an opportunity slip away. Greg, just going to play at the big house, I mean, obviously, how do you prepare for that? And Noah said the other day that even you know playing in the Carrier Dome, while it's not a perfect example, perfect comparison, it could be a good way of preparation for that. I mean, do you kind of agree, and how do you get ready for an environment like this? Yeah, I think, you know, we have the ability to do it. We did it getting ready for Syracuse. We did it. Um, in the years past, you know, we have crowd noise, we have systems that we've invested money in that uh, provide, I mean, you can't hear yourself talk from me to you away. It's not going to be louder than that. So I'm not, uh, that really isn't, the issue you deal with when you play on the road is you can't let the momentum, you can't judge what's going on, the momentum, all those things. You just got to chop your job, just go and do what you're supposed to do. Um, when you start letting all that other stuff become part of the equation, well, now you're playing right into the mess, right? So playing on the road, there's certain things that we talk about all the time, and I think our guys understand what it's going to take. But, again, it's been a while since we've played on the road, you know, in the Big Ten with crowds, not since I've been here. So this is our first Big Ten road game, and it's a good place to start. Have you seen anything different from Julius as a pass rusher? He's got about as many sacks in three games as he has his entire career. Well, I think, number one, he's got opportunity now, right? He never was out there on third down. So he is part of the, you know, every D lineman's dream is to be on the third down rush team, right, because it's a high level of pass. Now, he's earned that right, and I think he's done a good job. He's made some – he's pressured the quarterback on first and second down, which he's always been able to do, and now he's doing it on third down as well. Are multiple now, but are you more of a four-two-five unit, or is it just a week-to-week -week thing? Um, how does your defense evolve in a in a in a, in a, in a week-to-week? -week? Is it a week-to-week -week thing? Yeah, it's really a matchup thing, right? Uh, you know, if you're looking at a three-receiver offense, we oftentimes, not always, but we oftentimes like to have five DBs on the field. You know, the the structure of it, you can call it whatever you want, but I just look at it as you got three or four linemen, you have two or three linebackers, and you have five or six DBs. And how that shakes out, how you structure it, you know, everybody wants to put it in a box. You know, I don't think you can. I mean, because you look at the two teams we just played were three, five, threes, but they didn't, they didn't even look similar, right? So uh, to me, it's more personnel-based. Obviously, Max Melton's been big through the first three games. What did you see in him? He's one of the first guys you got when you came here, you know, in that frenzy of a recruiting. But what, what did you see out of him, and how's that really translated over the last two years? Well, I sure am. We sure are blessed to have Max. He is a, a, a really good player. He's a tremendous competitor. I mean, just, I mean, you don't want to play anything. You know, this guy, this guy wants to win every single thing he does. And uh, he approaches practice like that practices that way and then he goes and plays that way so I, I really uh, think he's a, a very good corner and he's getting better every day uh, he's, he's still a young guy right he's what's he played 12 games 12 college games so the equivalency of one season so I think I think he can really become a great one if he just continues to work the way he is Sticking with the defensive backs, can you talk a little bit about uh, Kassan Abraham? He's started the past two weeks, and he's been rather impressive in both games. Yeah, and the only reason he didn't start three weeks is because they started a different personnel group, right? Or he could have easily had three starts under his belt. Kess really stepped up. Kess has had issues with injuries earlier in his career. Um, I think he's made a renewed commitment to playing Rutgers football. And he's certainly talented enough to do that. So I love the way Kess approaches things. 
Uh, he's a fighter. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but don't tell him that because he's going to fight you tooth and nail, and uh, I think he's played well. You mentioned, you said a lot about, you know, how real last year was. Is this the ultimate week to push that message, that game in triple overtime? I mean, no one, either side really knows what that was, I guess, a year later. Well, they're a different team. I think just look at it, right, from they didn't have their best player when we played them last year. I mean, there's a lot of differences. That that game was a shame. We had our opportunity there, and we didn't take advantage of it, right? Uh, this is a different Michigan team, though. And, you know, I'd like to think we're a different Rutgers team, too. And as I said earlier when we started, I'm just excited to go see how we stack up. And uh, we're going to know probably by around 7.30 or so, probably know where we stack up. Greg, you mentioned the other day the improvement on third down. Um, what do you think attributed to that, and, and how do you got it to obviously become consistent going forward now into Big Ten play? Well, it's, it's a critical down, right, third down defense to get off the field. And uh, I think – you know, Coach Smith said it best. We finally had a spring and a training camp and a summer because some of that stuff on third down is so different than what you do on first and second down. So if you have limited time to install, you're really going to focus on, you know, there's a lot more first and second downs than there are third downs. And we were, we were very much up against it last year with the way the schedule was canceled and brought back. I mean, you didn't have training camp. The kids were in school. So you literally had a bunch of in-season practices, and then you went and played a game. So to have spring, to have summer, and to have training camp, to really install and coach the finer points of the third down package. Because um, you don't – What one thing about third down defense is you don't do all of it every week. You have an extensive menu, and then you pull down from that menu depending on what you're up against, who you're facing. And I think we never really had a chance to get everything – installed to a lever where we were comfortable calling it. I know it happened, you played last year, but it was different. What's it like for you to come out of a tunnel, you know, in your Rutgers stuff, and to see that winged helmet across the way? Or to see Ohio State's helmet or Nebraska or anything? I, like I said, I, I believe Rutgers from 2002 on, I really believe that that's where Rutgers belong. And we were blessed to get accepted and, and admittance into the Big Ten we have to show that we belong by the way we play on the field. Basketball's done that, right? We got to do it in football. A lot of our other sports are doing it as we speak. I'm really, really proud of, of all our coaches and, and athletes. I mean, there's some great things going on right now. We're a little behind some of the rest of the programs, but we want to catch up desperately and we want to be part of that excitement of Rutgers in the Big Ten because I really, really believe this is where we belong. And again, we'll see where we stack up. Maybe we're ready now. Maybe we're not. We'll know by Saturday night. But uh, I'm excited to do it. And in, in the long run, this is where we belong. Thanks, guys.